Strike the rifle harder. Get aggressive with it. Three, two, one. The recruits from Cornwall Division have made it to the halfway stage of their 10 week initial training course. Keep your mouth shut because there's all sorts of rats, piss, and shit in there. Let's go, let's move, move, move. Five have already dropped out, and for those remaining, things are about to get tougher. They need to meet a standard. This isn't an audition for X Factor. This is joining the military and getting sent to war. They have to be as perfect as they can be. It's tough and not everybody's going to make it. Don't you find it embarrassing being in the back for everything? Let's move! Let's move. Over the next few weeks, the demands on the recruits will increase and those who can't meet the standard risk being discharged. Don't try and bullshit me because you can't bullshit a bullshitter. All right, it's too many years, all right? You need to square them up. In addition, the recruits have now served their mandatory four weeks, and from here on, if they can't take it, they can quit at any time. Mentally, like, it's just so tiring, the 10 weeks, so, so tiring. And then on top of it, it's so physically tiring as well that you just get pushed to your absolute limits here. Dick, where's the entrance to this thing? Oh. At 21 and struggling to afford university, recruit Cara Gillies couldn't decide what path to take. Come on, you I did loads of travelling and stuff, and you know when you like go travelling, you're meant to have like that epiphany of what you want to do. Never happened, and I swear it never has happened to anyone, um, unless you've like become a dolphin trainer or something from going to Florida. And then I worked in a cheese shop. Ugh. It's like my left testicle that I don't actually have. But if I did, I would... Actually, I don't know what I'd do with it. I literally just was, like, hit a wall one day where I was just so bored of selling cheese to people. Watching your friends going through university and you're just there doing, like, little menial jobs where you feel like, not that you deserve better, but you feel like you want something more for yourself. For sake, you little rat. Get in the old bed cover. If she makes it through her phase one training at Rally, Gillies will study to serve as a dental nurse in the fleet, an opportunity that would otherwise cost her thousands. First, she must decide if she can adapt to life in the Navy. I don't enjoy Rally. The only thing that's keeping me kind of going is the fact that phase two will probably be a bit different. And if I like it, it'll probably make a good career out of it. Just give it a try. Does your guy's stuff smell like home? Mine smells funny. Before she left, I think the nerves started to set in. I think there will be times when she feels a little bit out of place, but I think they want people to develop that resilience and to rise to the challenge. Gillies can't afford any doubts as she heads into the most gruelling part of training. She's a good recruit. She's only had one warning, and she does actually bring quite a lot of morale to the class. But what they don't realise is actually this is where training ramps up. Today, recruit Gillies and her class must face Rally's notorious high ropes. No shit in my pants. You're fine, you're fine. Designed to test recruits' ability to overcome their fear. All right, I'm going to wipe your tears away before you start. <laughs> when you're on board ships, there's things that are life-threatening. Fires, floods. You want to see, if, would that person be able to run into a, sh a ship's compartment that was on fire and have the courage to drag the casualty out and fight the fire? Doing the high ropes is a massive test of courage. Massive test. That's it. On top of the 40-foot post, they must jump off regardless of their fears. If any recruit fails to commit to this exercise, they could face a warning. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Sorry. I never do stuff like that. Like To me, that's just the most horrible thing ever, having to trust on a little piece of string. It's really good for us to see as instructors them doing something that they may be scared of and how they act with that. Take your time, you don't need to rush up there. Oh, oh. Fuck's sake. Oh. Well done Gillies, you're doing really well. 
I think she pushes herself to be brave. I don't think she is a natural risk taker. I think most things in terms of physical um, endurance probably um, scare her a little bit. Height, water. Oh, sweet mother of Jesus, no. Ah! How? Oh, oh fucking hell, no. Oh, you're not gonna go anywhere. Oh. Oh. Put both hands on your rope and pull yourself up. Well done. Well done. Oh, I hate this. Get yourself to the edge of the board. Three, two, one. Jump. You can do it. I hate this. Just jump off. We got you. Ready? Three, two, one. Jump. <laughs> my dad was in the Navy and my brother's in the Marines. I think like he was a bit like, you know, not really a Navy sort of military person. Like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Sometimes I obviously do question like, is this for me? We're not looking for someone who can't commit to if they can't do that in 10 weeks, then how do we expect them to do it for a future career when they're serving on board warships? She does really need to want to be here. I actually cannot believe how worked up that first thing got me. Recruits here range from 16 to 37. At 17, Callum Kerr is the youngest in Gillies' class. Last night I got some balls on my face. These were like McFarlane's face shirts. Nope. LeBain's. Well done. <laughs> got balls covered by boxers in my face. Right, okay, why'd you get that? Uh, I am lucky and I have the bed which is nearest to the charger, so they have to climb over me to get to the charger. I'm yeah. in bed, they're half naked. Sounds nice. Goes on from there. My nickname. I don't, I don't really have one. I would get. Uh, Wan, which is basically, my last name's Kerr, just goes off that. I've got a new one, Shakura. It's a bit weird, I would say, because apparently I've got a bit of got high hips. Kerr, he's funny, he's, he's a bit different. He's been the one that's kind of just like always been getting the warnings, being late. Sorry, Greg. Kerr is from a military family across the River Tamar in Plymouth and hopes to become a chef on a submarine. I don't know what the rules are about sending stuff, but are my parents allowed to drop something in a plastic bag for me at the guard room? My parents live in Plymouth and they said it'd be easier for them just to bring it over. Well, it'd be easier for them to drive to the yeah. ferry, get on the ferry, come over the ferry, drive from the ferry yeah. to here, drop something off, then go back to the ferry, over the yeah. ferry, and then back home. Yeah. So I want coat, coat hangers. OK. Where does it buy a couple of coat hangers? You can't, uh, like... There's a shop, is there? Yeah. All oh, right. That's, that's sort of... <laughs> 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 right, Fucking right. hell. By now, Kerr should have proved he deserves his place but his instructors are not convinced. Kerr. <sighs> Where should I start with Kerr? He seems a nice enough lad. It's just he's one of these boys that whenever he does something wrong, he's going to get caught for it. I don't fancy him, no. I, I honestly do not. <laughs> Kerr, get off. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. My first ever warning, I got that for having dirty shoes. Obviously, they weren't dirty, they were just a speck of dust or something on them, which I think is a bit stupid. Fuck. Yeah. His uh, personal organisation is up his ass. Then I got my five and standards warning from Jim because I closed my eyes during a sit up session because I had sweat in my eyes. Can we go now? Can we go now? I would love to see Kerr pass out. But he really needs to work on his attitude. If he passes out with this class, great. I'll, I'll be, I'll be proud and a little bit shocked. <laughs> Chests out, heads up, marching nice and proud, like you want to be here, all right? In his first five weeks, Kerr racked up a worrying nine minor warnings, 
But today, Chief Bouchier is giving him his first official disciplinary reprimand. Some of the things we badger them about seem quite trivial. Do I think the operational capability of a unit would be jeopardised by dirt on your boot? Absolutely not. But do I think it would be compromised by your ability to carry out simple instruction? Then absolutely it would. Right, recruit Kerr. I am going to place you on a tier one warning for your personal organisation and for your values and standards. Have you got anything for me? No, Chief. Recruit Kerr, about turn. My hope would be that Recruit Kerr has a penny drop moment and we can pass him out as a young sailor. As to whether I think that's going to happen, on the path he is at the moment, I can see a downward spiral for him. He will have to grow up or go. My parents were both army, my brother's army. The Royal Navy, that was the only job which I see myself doing. That's the only job I've wanted to do for ages. I've grown up wanting to do that job. It's something to be proud about. My parents are prouder of me. I've not even got a plan B. But nothing else out there for me, is there? The problem with Kerr is he's still a little bit immature and he just needs to know when to keep his mouth shut. He's going to set the world alight. Mm -hmm. His heart's in it. You can see that, can't you? At this rate, he's not going to make it. Only time will tell, I guess. Prepare Pamela Anderson without tits. Any colour? Yeah, that is. I'll go for that. Yeah. Go for <laughs> the Cornwall recruits are in the second half of training. With their mandatory four weeks out of the way, they can leave at any time. I've got light. Pretty decent. Trying on clothes, oh, yeah. I'm about to get into. Hurry oh, yeah. up, Ben. When Cara Gillies joined up, she was unsure if she was right for the Navy. Recent exercises have increased these doubts. Part of me feels like it's not an environment I'm not meant to be in, but just um, something very different from what I imagine myself to be doing. Girls, you done? She's coming, but like, don't go around the corner. No, there's not ifs and buts. Get fucking changed. Are we up, Gillis? Fucking shave off. Nothing like the element of surprise, is there? <laughs> if, <laughs> if any further clarification needed that you're a buffoon, it's just been, just been confirmed. Right, girls, see you later. Gillis and her class are preparing for one of the course's most arduous tasks, a survival trek across the harsh terrain of Dartmoor. Right, guys, packing the all essentials. Shee we? Everyone in the Navy at some point is put out their comfort zones, if you like. So we use Dartmoor to put them through the paces, really. They're going to be stressed, tired, hungry, and we need to make sure that that's not going to affect their performance. We want to test their um, ability to crack on with something that's going to be quite difficult. Peel Trotter has put Gillies in charge of her class, hoping it will prove she can cope under pressure. You're going to decide who does what. Right, you need okay. to listen to Gillies. OK, she's IC today. You're in charge of this team. Okay. Last person, shut the gate. I'm not sure if Gillies can embrace the life of the Navy, and neither is she, so... I've given her IC to see if she can embrace it when it's going to be a challenging task for her anyway. Every recruit must carry a backpack weighing up to 15 kilograms. They have five hours to navigate a number of checkpoints spread across 14 miles of moorland. It'd be easier to get to the checkpoints quicker whilst it's cool with like a small amount of brakes and then pick up the brakes as it gets hotter because it's quite cool right now. I don't think I'm as serious as everyone else, but, but I think I can adapt to when I need to be serious quite easily, like I can switch. Greg, Sky, stop. Guys, stop we waiting are, to be able to are, catch are. up and get... The baby, you're going to have to slow down the pace because you've got girls here. You've got shorter legs than you. The guys started like, shooting ahead of all the girls and they were just like running ahead like their like walking pace was like us like running along with our little legs. 
So instead of walking off from the rest of the group with your own bloody plan, do you want to maybe stay here and communicate? <laughs> when you think, oh, who, who could lead us on this? In that group, you would not think it was Gillies. As leader, Gillies is expected to keep the group working together so they can navigate a course across Dartmoor. <laughs> The track's pointing basically over that way. Oh, valid, but it'd be oh, stupid valid. to go down the hill and then go back up. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh. Are we at the top of the tour yet? This isn't a tour, is it? Shit. Oh, no. What? I thought that was a tour, Pale of Rocks. Uh, do... It just made me feel like like a, like a stupid little girl yomping around with a crappy little Bergen on Dartmoor not knowing what the hell she was doing. What, where do we go from the tour in what direction? Do we go the opposite way from the main checkpoint? So where have we gone wrong? We got lost for an hour and a half. The map reading situation, she didn't have a clue. I, nor did I, but I wasn't planning on being leader. Right, so do we need to go back to where we came? I turned around and Francis was crying. Um. It's fucking horrible. What's fuck's sake? I just got so overwhelmed with it all. It just went so tits up, it was just terrible. So coming up the whole... Peel Trotter must intervene and lead them back off the moor herself. Like someone needs to take charge and actually know where they're going. If Gillies had said, I'm the IC, um, I want you to listen in and being more firm, maybe they would have gone, hmm, all right then and they probably would have listened. It's not designed to be an easy thing, it's a, a test of your mentality. It's all in the head. If they can't cope with Dartmoor, um, then they're probably not the best people for the job. So basically we've been told, you're doing something really shit. It's not nice, really not nice. That was just def definitely like a massive knock to my confidence in that respect. It made me upset to think that my team didn't enjoy it, and I was like, was that because of me? Um, obviously, it made me, made me question myself loads. A massive failure, massive failure. It made me question like whether it was right for me to be here. This fucking shirt, I swear to fuck. It's now week seven, and Kerr has three more warnings to add to his tally. His next kit inspection is one of the few chances he has left to prove himself. I don't know, constant kit. It's just so bloody boring, because you've done it so much. It's like, imagine playing the same sequence of life again and again and again for 65 days. You wash it, you dry it. Fold it, iron it, shit all shit like that. All eyes are on Kerr to impress at today's inspection. Here, Trotter, Kerr. Yeah. Uh, one of my boots, my combat boots, I ran out of brown polish, so I, it's all clean, but one of them looks ten times better than the other. I don't wear it, if that's allowed. Do you think that it's good enough? And another question for you, Kerr, whilst you're pondering that one, is good enough good enough? Should I go and change it? What are you doing now? Uh, Nothing. What could you be doing? Didn't do. There yeah. we go. Could one. Yeah. I can't imagine Kerr's going to do anything to, to bring it out of the bag. If the ship started to sink and Kerr plugged up the hole with his own head, then potentially. <laughs> I think at the moment, if I ever did serve with Recruit Kerr in any establishment, it would concern me. Morning, Commodore 5 Port. How are you? Good, sir. Get 
One of Raleigh's most senior figures, Lieutenant Commander Freddie Fox, is leading today's inspection. How are you, Recruit Graham? I guess so, how are you? When they move forward in their professional training, they will be signing out pieces of equipment worth thousands and thousands of pounds that they need to look after, use, use properly and return. So they need that pride in the lumps of kit that they're working with. Recruit Care, how are you? Fine, sir. Good stuff. Have you enjoyed the training so far? It's been on it, sir. What did you do this morning, first thing? Then I'm off. A little bit dusty, sir. This morning I made my beds. Yeah, I know that. Did you go down and attempt to speak to division? Oh, uh, yeah. What about? Uh, my <clears throat> right boot. OK. Well, that's a lesson for you there, isn't it? By the time you stood there five minutes to tell him about an unclean boot, having another 20 minutes thereafter, then surely the option would have been just clean your bloody yeah. boot in the first place, would it not? Yes, sir. OK. You need to start switching on a little bit, Kerr, because, frankly, I will be incredibly concerned at the moment, potentially, about your suitability to pass your training. So if basic things like kit are getting to you, then alarm bells ring. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. OK? Slam your bollocks in the drawer a bit, yeah? Yes, sir. Just start to grip this training, all right? Because at the moment, you're not floating anybody's boat. Yes, sir. Now that Kerr has been brought to the attention of one of Raleigh's most senior officers... Well done. ..one more mistake could see him discharged. Kerr's dream of being in the Navy and having a career from it is not enough to get him through. He needs to put more effort in. Being honest, I'm quite a lazy person. I can accept that. I'm 17. I've never stayed away from a parent in my life before. I went from my mum doing everything for me, literally everything, to coming here to do everything for myself. Whilst Kerr is struggling to apply himself, he has previously shown the sort of grit and determination the Navy wants. In the past year, I went from weighing about, weighing about four, 14 and a half stone to right now, which is eight. When people looked at me, I just thought, I'm just fat, that's what you think. I need to lose weight. Like, I, did, I wasn't happy with it, kind of thing. I obviously wanted to join the Navy, and part of that was losing weight. It does make a big difference. I mean, the size of me, compared to what I am now, is weird. Kerr's career rests on a knife edge. Some would look at me and think, oh, he's not capable of this. But actually, I, I think I've got, like, steel inside me. It only really shows when it really needs to be shown. I know that I need to show why I should be here. Frozen! Let me put Frozen on! Just Frozen! Just Frozen! God! Yeah! Hey, man, you better make it what we can sing to, boy. Yeah! Let it go! Let it go! Recruit Gillies had doubts about joining the Navy, but the opportunity of being paid to study her chosen specialism of dental nursing convinced her it was a risk worth taking. She only has three weeks left, but her last exercise on Dartmoor did not go well. That was the first time that I felt like I had failed and just screwed the whole group over. That's one thing that made me question, oh, am I right for the Navy? Academically, Cara is used to doing well. Rally is a different environment. It's not academic in terms of what she's required to do. So it's been a little bit more difficult for her to not be the best and, and to fail at some things. Gillies, come in. P.O. Trotter has scheduled a debrief with Gillies following her performance on the moor. That was my worst experience ever since being here. I was wondering for a bit whether like, it was even right for me to be like here, like I didn't, I was like, am I the right sort of person for, for this work environment? Because I was literally like, at, at that point, I was just so, like, I was just so upset that that whole weekend, I absolutely hated it. All these things that happen for a reason, yeah. and it's to instill the service core values, and it's a 10-week job interview. Definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. 
you've got to pass the job interview before you get the job of being in the Royal Navy. Yeah. Another of Peel Trotter's struggling recruits, Callum Kerr, has been accumulating warnings at an alarming rate. Can you smell that for me? Is it honking? Uh, no, it's not honking, but I... Sorry. It doesn't smell particularly nice. Is that just because he's a boy? For most of his time here, he's been staring down the barrel. He does need to pull it out of the bag. And if he does get his head down, then there is a chance that people will see him in a different light. Kerr and his classmates are awaiting the results of another crucial assessment, their final kit inspection. After being ordered to improve, he, more than anyone, is desperate for good news. Who thinks they failed? <laughs> Bit negative. Right. If I give you your chip back and you have passed, you can leave. No, I'm not going to... Oh, I'm failing, aren't I? Oh my god, thank God. If you have passed, you may leave the room. Oh my god. I feel so fine. I feel so good. I believe I have the potential. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe it, would I? I'm so happy. It's all about hope. You need to have a hope here. You really do. Four cars, home, by the left, dress. Can you have one of these? That is like an angel pissing all over my tongue, that is. And it's, you're absolutely coated. For fuck's sake. That was one, that was not your finest idea, that. No, it wasn't, was it? Thank you very much. Cool, Walter Vision, Pierre George speaking. Hi, are you right? Shit. Yeah, did he admit to not, not ironing it as well, yeah? A fitness instructor has reported Kerr for turning up at the assault course with an unironed top. As his lead instructor, P.O. Trotter, must investigate. Um, doesn't necessarily he'll go, he may get training extended, he may get kept in division and a bollock in, I don't know. The penny hasn't dropped. I, I think it, it, he nearly gets there and the penny no, the penny doesn't quite drop. All right, mate, see you later. Bye. There's only so much I can do as his instructor. He's got to do the rest. And has he been putting 100% into everything? No, he hasn't. Report. Recruit Kerr, Cornwall 5, Port Glass, for me to speak to P.O. Trotter. Right, come in, Kerr. Shut the door. Stand to attention. Right, why are you here? An iron shirt. Right. He told me that it was that badly ironed that it looked like it had just been screwed up in a ball and you shoved it on your back. How many times have you been in front of me for this sort of thing now? Loads of people. I've lost count. So what do you think is going to happen now? Discharge. Yeah. I can't fend your corner anymore. You're basically just flicking piss at me. And it wouldn't surprise me if you end up going out the main gate. So I've, I've, I don't really care anymore. All right? Let's go. Get out. Permission to carry on, Pierre. Carry on. Kerr now has so many warnings, Trotter has to send him to Lieutenant Commander Fox, where he'll have to fight for his career in the Navy. I've seen people go to the table for less and end up getting discharged. My hope's gone. I am fucked. Hello? Hi. I've got bad news. Uh, I could be discharged. I have to go to the table tomorrow. So I could be back, I could be back class. The best thing is back class, the worst thing is discharge, basically. I know I'm not the best person in the world, but it's some things I am shit at, I understand that. But it's a work in progress. I've improved, 
Fuck loads from what I started at. That must count for something. It is the end of the world if it's discharged, though. Because I want to be here and I deserve to be here. And if I do not get in the Navy, I've got nothing else to do. I don't have any other dreams in my life than to do this. I've made fuck ups, but everyone makes fuck ups. I've learned, I've learned from my mistakes. To think, oh, I may not get through it, and be back to our original state of doing f flipping nothing back at home, sitting in your room all day doing crap. That's a massive downer. I've got nothing back home, Mum. I've got nothing to do. Move to the left and freeze left. Turn! Fire! Left. Today, Gillies must take on one of the most psychologically challenging exercises at rally. Left. Left, right, left, right. Havoc is the Navy's sinking ship simulator and recreates the conditions of a ship flooding after coming under attack. I'm a really good swimmer, but then when it comes to being submerged, it makes me feel ill. Anybody genuinely concerned about what is about to happen? Yeah. A bit? In what way? Um, breathing. Breathing? The recruits must repair a breach in the engine room after a missile strike. Pull the nose back over your chin, otherwise it'll get wet and you won't be able to breathe properly. Oh, follow me. We're teaching them the life of the Navy, basically. It really is a dangerous place out there. Most ships that have had collisions or an accident on board and they've, they've started flooding, the majority of them have been saved by the reactions of the ship's company, so it is literally about a matter of life or death. I just feel like I'm like always the one that's like scared of stuff like that. Other people will be like buzzing and really excited about something. I just will be hating it, hating the thought of it. I think that if she doesn't do great, I think it will have an, another knock on her confidence. Um, and I'm not sure on whether she will decide, I ain't doing this anymore, it's not for me. As soon as the lights go out, around 40 tonnes of water will fill the compartment in four minutes. I, did, I didn't think, oh, this is a fake situation, it's a simulation. Like, I was just thinking, oh my god, this room is filling up with water, I'm going to die. I think it's going to knock fear into her, definitely. But what I want to see is how she's going to perform when she's put in that situation. However, there's a catch. There is actually no way to succeed in this exercise. No matter what they do in the engine space and Havoc, the water will just keep coming. It's a test of how far they're going to go. Recruit Cara Gillies and her class are currently trying to hold back around 40 tonnes of water after a simulated missile strike. It is a test of commitment. If you can't do it, then you're not fit to be in the Navy. The sheer pressure of the water was just scary. Oh, I was crying to myself. I, I know I was crying on the inside, but I was just thinking, I want to do this. I think the fear of failure for Kara in herself would outweigh her fear of the activity that she was asked to do that day. She would push through. She stayed in. I was really impressed, actually. And I actually felt like, wow, she did good.
felt so like happy that I just got out of there and finished it. I've done that. First time I saw real grit, determination and effort. She just didn't give up and you could see that she was, this is rubbish, but um, she just kept, kept going and kept going. And I believe she would have kept going all day. For her to, to push herself through an exercise like that tells me that the Navy is something that she's very determined about. I felt proud of myself. It felt good to know that Pierre Trotter said that she was really impressed with me. I guess it is all relevant to what people are scared of, like overcoming a fear, but I haven't really overcome it because I'm still going to hate it. Have I done it again, Smudge? Yeah. I'm gonna murder this thing. Fucking fish fucker. After his 15th warning, recruit Kerr faces his disciplinary. If Lieutenant Commander Fox decides he's not up to training, he will be discharged. I've never faced anything like the table before. Your career could be ended on the spot. Going into the room to be told how shit you are, I'm going to be absolutely shit myself when I go in there. Does he deserve to be punished for, for accumulation of things in which he's done? Yeah? Yes. Also, how much potential has he got to grow? quite a lot really because yeah. he is a kid um, but at the same time has he passed everything that we need for him to pass no does he deserve to pass out no go get down here go and stand by that fuse box just beyond the mirror i always feel for the recruits that have had a lot of failings but at the same time if they can't meet the standard then they leave right do you want to be here Kerr? yes master well start showing it young man I will be serving with you in the fleet, but unless you can get it right now, then you're in the wrong job, young man. You are not passed out. So it doesn't give you the right to take your foot off the gas. It is 100% the minute you wake up until pipe down. That is what is expected of you in training, and that is what is expected of you to be a sailor. I really, really want to be in the Navy. And to someone to say no, something which you really, really want, it's absolutely horrible. It's saying no to a dream. Recruit! Care! Sir! If I get discharged, I will literally feel so shit that it will mentally fuck me up. Recruit, salute. Sir, Recruit Care stands before you today for failings in personal organisation. Right, this is where we are, Recruit Care. Precarious, in a word. Hopefully we've had enough time to demonstrate to you just how serious we are about our recruits and manage their success in training, but I can't manage you being a prat. You speak to me now about whether or not my divisional staff have picked you up accurately. Go on, you speak. I believe everything they've done is fair, sir, and I take full responsibility of all my actions, sir. Well, that's a great answer, Kerr. Well done for that. At the moment, I'm concerned about your consistent approach to naval training. Do you understand? Yes, sir. OK. Your tenure here at HMS Rally is most certainly in the balance. I'm thinking you're not mature enough. This is what's going to happen. Stop being a prat. Learn from what you've been taught already and stop making silly mistakes. You need to start demonstrating 24-7 that you can do as you are being ordered to do, OK? Recruit Care is to be placed under Tier 3 warning for failures in personal organisation. Recruit Care escapes dismissal with a severe warning. 
but the slightest fault before he completes the course will see him discharged. March. I don't think he realises how lucky he is to still be here. I just don't need to fuck up again, basically, but I've got how many days to not fuck up? And considering we're not even including Thursday and Kit, because my biggest thing is Kit. No. I'm, you're glad I'm staying now, aren't you? No. Do you know what? Oh. Fuck life. I'm passing out. Over the last weeks of training, Kerr makes no more mistakes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. They're fucking absolutely gleaming. Oh my god, they're beautiful. Recruit Kerr. And receives his training qualification. Well then, Kerr, are you ready for this certificate? Yes, ma'am. Are you sure? Yes, Leaving only his pass out ceremony to rehearse for. I think last week the penny dropped with him. And he's very much like, I needed, I needed the kick up the ass. And, it, and it's, I think it has sorted him out. I just feel like I'm a different sort of person than I started. I, f I feel mature, more mature, definitely, than I was. It just wouldn't be the same without him, because he's that person that people not only laugh at, but also can, like, laugh with. Guard, eyes, front! Guard, stand that. Easy! Guard, stand! Easy! Yeah, pigeon, stay on. Kerr was never going to be the best recruit. However, the Navy doesn't want robots. Every class has to have a cur. I wish him the best. Some people can say I'm lucky, some people can say I've earned it. I think I've proved myself. I've earned the right to say I'm in the Royal Navy. Ah! Hiya, Gillies, come in. You're just doing well in, in everything at the moment. You, you are standing out in areas oh, that you probably <laughs> didn't think. So you do, you do have it in you. I remember you were concerned that you didn't know if there was a place for you in the Navy, as in like fitting in wise. Yeah. Do you still feel like that? I do feel, I do feel like fine in the environment, but like sometimes I do feel different when I like. You will find a place for yourself to fit in yeah. and you'll find where your, your place where you belong. Yeah. In the final week, Recruit Gillies also continues to improve. The more and more I get to know Gillies, the more I think she will fit in just fine. Guys, I can fit in the locker. It definitely is not like a holiday because holidays are fun. But I want to do this and that's why I've done this 10 weeks because I want to do this and I want to work my ass off to get where I want to go. Is this us? I got a towel with both. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, what a day. Obviously not for everyone, but I think I can make it work. <laughs> I'll just have to wait and see. Oh, oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> Trust me, this has been the longest 10 weeks of my life. Oh my God, it's long. Attention in the establishment. Face the main mast and salute colours. 